We could keep going up one half step at a time to describe each possible interval. But as we get into larger intervals, it's easier to name them by number and or quality than by trying to count or remember how many half steps are between the two, just like we wouldn't use inches to measure the distance between New York and LA when we could use miles. So for that, we have a naming system that involves two variables, number and quality. For numbering intervals, we use words like unison, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And for quality, we use words like perfect, imperfect, major, minor, augmented, diminished. Unisons, fourths, fifths, and octaves, or eighths, are called perfect intervals. And the remaining intervals, seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths, are considered imperfect. Each of the imperfect intervals have two versions, which are called either major or minor, depending on their size. So we can have either a major or minor second, a major or minor third, a major or minor sixth, or a major or minor seventh. We use the word augmented to describe an interval that is one half step larger than a perfect or major interval. And we use the word diminished to describe an interval that is one half step lower than a perfect or minor interval. We also use the word sharp to describe raising a note by a half step and flat to describe lowering it by a half step. This chart shows all the intervals within an octave. I know it probably looks like a lot of complex information if you've never seen it, but it's really pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Knowing how these intervals both appear on the fretboard and feel under your fingers is what we're trying to accomplish here. So let's go over how each one looks on the fretboard so that you can picture them easily when you're playing. Remember, intervals are a stepping stone on our way to learning scale degrees, which are very similar, but not entirely the same. Learning to think in terms of scale degrees will make you a much better songwriter, but to do that, we need to first understand intervals. 